Welcome back. Uh, hopefully we're going to do a bit of work on the bones now. So what I'm going to do is basically uh, drag some bones out, create them for the mushrooms and then attach them onto things like the spine. So in order to do that, um, we're going to have to possibly go and change one of the views to the back view eventually. Start with click on your bone, like so. And I'm going to go in my right in perspective and then kind of do this because it's just going to be easier. We click at the base of the mushroom, drag it out and down to the side, and right click and it'll finish with a bone nub. And if you're like me it will place your bone in the middle of nowhere. Just have to scale these down and reposition them to max for you. So you'll end up with something similar to this anyhow. So using those, I'm going to rotate them a tiny bit. And <coughs> we're going to create a sort of stalk for the middle and then four bones, which will lead to something like a mill kind of shape. Rotate. So all we're doing here is trying to fit the uh, shape of the bone. So I'm not trying to do anything complicated. Uh, shape of the mushroom, sorry. Not anything complicated here. So as you can see, something like that, and the nub just sits right at the end of the mesh. And um, do is add some uh, fins onto this as well. And uh, like so, could possibly attempt to copy this bone. I think. And what to do now? Rotate it. Like I said, we want about four of these. scale these in like so and once you've got that I'm going to unlink the selection and then I'm going to link it to this bone here so now if you select the master bone we created to begin with you can see we can move the mushroom like so so I'm going to do the same again uh, so this time I'm going to shift and drag again bone 5 unlink it I'm going to mirror it not copy just mirror Again, all we're doing here, in fact, what we can do is if we select all of our bones and unfreeze everything a second, we can select our mushrooms and unhide selected like so. So now we can just work on our mushrooms and that saves us a lot of hassle. So basically, I'm just dragging this bone in. And again, pull that up, rotate it through the bottom of the mesh like so. So you don't have to add a lot of bones in at this point if you want to. You could even just do it with two simple bones, which I'll show you. We could do try that for the bottom one. You don't really necessarily need these to animate very complex at all. So like we're doing here, all we're doing is just making a simple section of bones like so. And again, can drag and make another bone here. Like so, as you can see, just a different way. And uh, we have a giant nub at the end here. Then, and of course, like everything in Max, it's always a good idea to, to call things now to lower back uh, or lower mushroom bone. And then, like 
I put this one? Port upper mushroom bag. And you can apply that to the other ones if you wish. So just showing you a variety of ways you can uh, actually work with your uh, mushrooms here. One giving you the simplest and easiest solution depending on how complicated you want your animations to be. So this done like so. Scaling down the nubs like this. So we should pull this uh, So again, just naming things quite plainly at the moment. Just going to unhide everything. So again, hiding that selection. I'm going to hide the uh, main torso mesh for the moment. Uh, what I want to do is then I want to link the main bones to the spines. So I'm going to select this one. And again, if you don't feel comfortable, you can open it up in the top panel, like so. And just linking the upper bones. Again, select, link, press H. And scroll down to find spine 1. Should be around here somewhere. Link that. Now, if we go to our rotate key, you can see our mushroom bones follow, which is what we want. Unhide everything again, like so. Uh, what we want to do now is select uh, mesh objects like this. This is only once we're happy with the uh, overall rig. Do not go to do this part until you think you've positioned everything where you want. Um, go scroll down to physique. You can use skin as well here if you're more familiar and appreciate that. Do some nice tool with physique. I'm just uh, with uh, skin. Sorry, I'm just using physique. So I just want to do this quickly. So then to attach to node, then you find your root of your skeleton, which is BMP02. He was probably zero 01, but because I've got two bipeds in my scene, obviously they now more consistently. So pick your node. And the pop-up bar comes up, and you want to change it to rigid again. Uh, no blending. This is just because of Quake 3 and how it works. So. Now we have our model rigged and set up. So theoretically, we can now move and animate our model. However, there'll be quite a few problems, as we are just about to find out. So for the moment, I'm going to call this three and save out just for a second. And with this setup, like so, what I want to do is I want to go and select part of the biped, go to a motion panel, like so, with figure mode still selected to save the file as base pose.v and the reason for this is when you save an open max after you've been animating sometimes your figure file will be distorted and if that happens it will be very difficult to come around and change your rig if you need to so just simply moving you can start to see our model has begin to deform to what we've set up here um, obviously you will have some problems with it <coughs> Like as you can see, some of the fingers start to animate with the uh, leg here. Well, what I'm going to do, like I said before, is actually going to get rid of the accessories for the moment just to show you the basic rig. So, if we play with our, our leg here, you can see our leg's fairly animating fairly properly. There's just a few problems which basically resolve in our hands and if we also bend over uh, that's also here you can see that not all of the mushrooms are deforming to the bones so we can also play with those so what we're going to do is literally you'll just go through your selection panel on physique here and when you turn on and go down to vertex selection you can see all of the vertices and what bones they're assigned to so basically it's a matter of going through and eliminating which vertices are animating well. So if I just move the hand here, you can see that the, on the little two fingers here on the left hand, uh, 
some parts of the vertices are being distracted and go towards the uh, left thigh here. So it's finger four and finger three. So what we want to do is again just go to your mesh, go down to your bottom vertices like so. And if you go to lock assignments, which basically stores where these vertices are assigned to, open up your panel, and you'll see that it's assigned to the thigh. So you want to kill that. And basically, I'm going to go down through here until I find the left finger. I'm at 4.1 because I want it to bend at that point. Press OK. And then deselect those vertices. We go to the ones next along. Again, lock your assignments. And kill your assignment to the thigh, like so. These I want to go to 3.1 or it could be 3.2 depending on how many links you've added in the skeleton. So go across now, move the hand, and there's still a couple of vertices which are not doing what we want them to do. So if we lock these and go through, so these aren't assigned to anything, unfortunately. So if we quickly go through and assign these, what can happen at this point? is as you're going to repeatedly reassign vertices some of the um, some of the uh, what do you mean? some of your um, basic model is going to be ripped apart if you're not careful and to solve that what you can do is you can turn off deformable and rigid and it will basically reset your models um, kind of physique and as it does that you should be able to carry on. I should show you an example of this soon actually. I'll probably get some of the problems here with the arm I'd imagine and all we're going to do is just tidy up these vertices to be honest. There's not a lot that we should have to do with this rig. Um, generally speaking a lot of the time in rigging we'll go to making sure that uh, it conforms to the skeleton principally and then any time after that is making sure that the a joint deforms in a specific way and I'm assigning something silly there always remember to assign the right ones so go through locking your assignments it's just a typical kind of process you're going to go through here and uh, there's a few trial and errors to begin with obviously and go through and what you'll want to do as well is some of the times like the joint underneath the arm here you'll want to bleed and by what I, tell, what I mean by bleed is the fact that you'll want a, a, almost a transition of um, weightings so that for one part it will be a hundred percent assigned to one bone and it will go to 25 percent and then bleed it say over a section of vertices rather than have it just on or off so to speak. So underneath this arm section here we can start off and we can lock these vertices and you can see it's applied to upper arm at uh, 1. So if we change that to 0 0.5 like so and scroll down and find the correlating spine there which is, 0, which is spine 1, it's 0 0.5 you can see it start to bleed a transition there and if we go through to the next set here like so lock these we want these about 0.75 to the upper arm and to the spine we want about 0.25 and as you can see you get this kind of gradient now which is a bit more like the flesh which you want to animate you don't want to be giving you know uh, kind of rips in your model so as you can see now that it blends more smoothly possibly we should add a bit more of a pull here to the arm on this vertice so if I lock that and go to the upper arm and I should change it to 0 0.25 you can start to see that bone, that uh, vertice also does that. So it's a matter of tidying up the arm there and just playing with and telling the joint to behave in a certain way to be honest. Um, the same with uh, a lot of this model now is if I turn this you can start to see a lot of the vertices down at the bottom here are going to be assigned to the wrong parts. So you have to go to the main torso, go to the vertex selection, and I'm just selecting a big chunk here of vertices, locking the assignments, and I'm just going in and just making sure that nothing is poorly assigned. And as you can see, most of it is done the way we want. 
and as we get nearer and nearer the legs here at the bottom obviously the torso is going to be starting to be affected slightly so we want to gradually ease in parts of this just so that we don't get gaping holes and stuff like that to be honest and we need to also add in some more give on the shoulders like so as you can see that's gone up out of position so like I was talking about go back to deformal switch back to rigid and generally speaking it will blend in properly now so just to show you just some of the pro problems with rigging just have to go through and adjust gradually some of these vertices here and just adding on and manipulating the weight just to behave realistically pretty much so <coughs> this sort of process again is completely up to you on how long you want to spend doing this it can take very little time but then again you can also spend a lot of time of your uh, development working on your model at this point because it does become rather tricky so with that said to the go-to uh, mushrooms and see how these are doing sometimes it can become quite difficult using bones mixed with physique Hopefully we won't have a problem. As you can see, we've got our upper bone here, which is basically where everything needs to be assigned to. So, if you go through, and I can go to again. Yes, we're going to hide unselected here. It's just going to make our life a lot, a lot, lot simpler. Go back to our selection of vertices, like so. And all I want to do is go around the mushroom like so rotating through and just panning around my model now just making sure I've got the main vertices as you remember I've only got uh, really one bone at this point for this mushroom so once I'm selected everything or roughly everything like so go to lock assignments and we want to turn off the effect that the head has, the effect that the spine has, and the effect that the arm has. So as you can see, there's three assignments there, which it shouldn't be affected by at all. So if we turn those off, and then we go round to the four connection vertices, which are these ones here, and also lock those, going to our weights. You can see that they're affected by the spine and by the bone, which is what we want. Go down to our other mushroom, like so. Select the points here. You can see that's all set up properly, so that's not being affected by anything else, just the mushroom bone. And what I'm going to do here is add an effect to the original spine of about 0.5. This is just so, so that it will bend when the spine bends. And if we scroll up to our other mushroom. Uh, lock the assignments going to the weight <coughs> you will see that it's affected again by a lot more more bones here so I'm just going through it and all I want to do is to check all the vertices like so and get rid of any pull that any wrong bone may have on this model and for the purple one in particular I'm going to have to unhide them all, everything okay, on to just basically rotate through see if any vertices are being pulled along twisted and as you can see the top vertice there not assigned to anything so if I go through lock that weight and go through you will find the mushroom bones here which we can add things to so if we just add that on like so there you have just enables you to check you can see if we bend it backwards some of the other bones are not 100% accurate to where they should be going 
Uh, it's just a matter of going through these little tests like so until you find something which obviously and I'm just going through bit by bit and playing until you find something that you need to change here I'm just going to rotate it back into a position like so and with this guy set up like this the next step would be to um, apply uh, animations now I'm not going to go through the cycles in this tutorial because that's a whole different setup of game development what I'm going to do is use a typical um, set from Quake 3 which was released by ID now if we go into our time configurations what we need to do is make sure that this is selected to custom of 15 frames a second this is very important that you do this um, basically we want the animations to be applied at the correct rate so what I'm going to do is going to unhide the, our original model here and press H and I'm just going to delete it I want to take off the tags because we'd like to keep those and that's deleted now and what I'm going to do is if you select your go to your viewer and select BIP02 like so go to your motion panel turn figure mode off if you go to load file and if you go to your troll DVD your source files and I think it will probably be in your Quake BMP it will be called however I've uh, got them stored somewhere else on my computer what we're going to do is we're going to apply here my, with just a random animation set now as you can see here there's a big big difference between the obviously the rig section to the unrigged left arm which I've done on purpose just to show you the difference of literally three or four little tweaks that we did just to make sure that the vertices would animate properly so if we go through this and just look now we can see we've got a whole section of animations which have been applied to our model which is exactly what we want and I'm just going to show you another little trick which you can do so if you go on press H go to your selection scroll through scroll down right to your bones press select and right click properties and go to turn rendable off press OK like so this enables you now if you want to take a render of your screen you can now see it without seeing the bones as you can see there there's a big difference between the hand that's rigged and the hand that isn't rigged and we can really play with this a lot more just to get you a bit more of a completed model so from here all you need to do now is to adjust your rig until it's working a bit better and then we can start to play with the tacks so I'm just going to turn figure mode off and basically all we're going to do now is just start to assign the same principles that you apply to the left arm to the right work with the right leg and uh, then we can start with the text